uh, well good evening everybody uh, welcome to lecture number 24 of the net set mentoring uh, lecture series organized by the alumni association of department of english saurash university uh, today we have with us uh, mr dharmesh vavaya uh, mr dharmesh vavaya is an assistant professor and head of the department of english at Bahudin College, Junagadh, Gujarat. Uh, he is going to talk to us about Victorian poetry today. Um, and another interesting aspect of this lecture is uh, towards the end of this lecture, he will also be giving us some insights about how candidates can, uh, in case of any discrepancy in the net set results, how can they fight for justice? So that is also one aspect, important aspect of this lecture, because it is noteworthy that uh, Dharmesh Pai's uh, name wasn't there in the initial merit list of GSET, and uh, he gave a tough legal fight, and uh, uh, he he was very confident that that his name should be there, and then finally he was able to make it, and he found that the error was not on on his part but on the part of the administration. So uh, he will tell us something about that as well, and I'm sure that will be useful for all the aspirants. So without wasting much time, uh, Dharmesh Bhai, the session is yours. Uh, you are you are muted. Yes. Hello, audible now? Yes, audible. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Parthvai, for addressing me like this because I'm one of you. I'm not the other. <laughs> uh, Hello, good evening to all. I think I'm very much audible. Few faces that are quite in my memory, Hena Mulyana, Devarsi, Tiragbhai, and so forth. So here, today I am in front of you to, I cannot say that this will deliver a lecture to all of you, but to share certain information which I have gained from the department. Uh, so uh, my screen is uh, visible. I have shared my screen. Yes. I will start yes. my VPT. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, part Is it visible? Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay, good. So we are starting with the Victorian poets. I myself, Dharmesh Bhavi, as introduced by Parthvai. Uh, here we are starting with Victorian poems. Who are Victorian poets? We can call Victorian poets. Uh, uh, only between from 1881 to 1901. Uh, this question is open to all of you. I want to have certain interaction to all of you before we start. Are they only in 37 to 1901? Hmm? What Victorian poets in them? Because the big for me is Victorian poets. Okay, uh, Dharmesh, why your voice is cracking in between? Uh, uh, maybe uh, if you can put off your video and try. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me. Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, participants, what he's asking is, you have to guess the names of the Victorian poets between 1837 and 1901. Okay, we already have a response in the chat box. Tennyson. Oh. <laughs> so, in my video, I want to try to open my video. So, see you. Okay, it's now, right? Yeah, it's slightly better. Uh, My video is off. Yes, yes. Okay. So, good. Yes, you can begin. You so, can yes, the answer that given that it's with me. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Victoria, A of Victoria, and A not be after can we 
uh participants please give us 2 minutes i think uh, he is yeah he he will he will better uh, uh, log out and uh, shift and rejoin audible part one uh yes as of okay. now yes audible i think due to bad network it is happening mm hmm but as of now you are audible okay good good then we should resume yes please is it visible uh, is the slide visible to you not yet not yet then again i will have to share from here Hmm. I think now yes. it's visible. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Good, visible. Good, good. Ha. Huh. So Please then start. we were talking about the few characteristics which have identified the certain group of uh, poets who are called Victorian poets, but any uh, post that is political post cannot claim that because these two things which are uh, overlapping each other. when you put yellow color aside and beside you are putting uh, green color so automatically they have overlapping to each other there isn't any particular pin point time where you can claim that this are from this time particular this day you have victorian poets i hope this context you can uh, uh, you are getting this context an era of material affluence political consciousness democratic reforms industrial and mechanical progress scientific advancement social unrest educational expansion empire building and religious uncertainty all this made what we call victorian era of literature not only poets because poets there are many poets here to whom about whom we are going to talk today they are they are writing very good player they are very good playwrights they are novelists they are essayists they are very good critics so uh, not all this few of the names that i have selected in our presentation they are not just poet there are many more than more than poets also but as the topic is selected as victorian poets so, uh, keeping the poetic aspects of this well we are talking about them so here wonderful quotation that is given there remains more faith in honest doubt believe me then in half the creed Uh, this is a uh, beautiful line these are beautiful lines from tennyson uh, by tennyson from in memoriam a h h i think 17 years he took to publish this work great work so early victorian poets to whom there are early victorians mid victorians and late victorians there is three categories in certain books certain sir if you can books. please turn on the slide show so that the uh, fonts are oh oh okay. so yeah. yes 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 thank you for drawing the attention are no worries no worries please 
Yes, for here we are. Only Victorians uh, for at least start from the first. Let us talk about Thomas Love Lowell Beddoes. Uh, here I have given uh, certain dates, beginning and ending of the poet. Thomas Lowell was not only poet; he was physician, poet, and dramatist. But he was greatly inspired from Shelley and uh, improvisator and uh, the bright tragedy that he has given wonderfully to work to remember from his side. John Clare, another that is also early Victorian, John Clare, he was not only poet. Uh, rural aspect and influenced by industrial revolution and uh, agricultural AR, that is agricultural revolution. You know, join uh, the base of Victorian poets are there underlying in the base of uh, romantic revival, romanticism. Uh, here we find in John Clare's poetry there are rural aspects, industrial revolution, agricultural revolution, so and so forth in his poetry. Uh, his poem descriptive of rural life and scenery. This is a uh, work by John Clare. The poetry of birds, signs of winter, autumn, furlough, between snowstorm, the fire tail. Now, if we are preparing this study material, we are reading and preparing for net and set examination. We must keep in mind that uh, all these dates and works cannot be remembered at a time, nor it can be marked up. So we have to correlate all these things to the predecessors and the age or era or the poets which are coming were coming after that. So here we have night wind, snowstorm, fire drill, all these are symbols winter, autumn. These are quite related to romanticism, romantic poetry. And he is in between of romantic and uh, Victorian. He is a joint in between two of these, Thomas Lowell and John Clare. Uh, here they are claimed as early Victorian. And if we have so many MCQs after this question, John Clare and his works, just remember, are there any works which are related to the nature? Then, yes, then assumption would go to John Clare. This is how we will prepare for the net and set examination. Otherwise, literature is a huge awesome. It cannot be remembered easily. Khusro, Khusro, I can remember Khusro for this. Khusro Dariya Pyar Ka Ulti Jis Ki Raar Jo Gira So Duba Or Jo Duba So Hi Pa Literature is like that awesome. We cannot read each and every word under the, in English literature. We cannot reach to certain topics, certain texts, certain works. But the passion that we have, that is to reach there. Ulti jiski da, gira so duba, jo duba so hipa. If you will become mad like, mad behind all these things only, then it will be easy to crack. Uh, Robert Browning, we have 1812 to 1889. These are my 50 men and women. Naming we the 50 poems finished. Take them. Love, the book and me together. Where the heart lies, let the brain lies also. Can you guess for whom he has dedicated these beautiful lines? My general question to all of you. Please you can you can unmute your mic and say me. Answer me. Can you just guess? To whom he has dedicated these beautiful lines. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Uh, can uh, uh, participants yes. can we have some guesses in the chat box? I, I, yes, I want a certain interaction so that it can be. It okay, can there's be an uh, there's yeah. a guest from uh, Nitin Pitharia. He said to painters. Okay, to painters. Yes, Pitharia sir. Any other?
anybody else please try to yeah, your assumption sometimes assumption uh, can be true if you have not read because the to remember such lines is very difficult task okay abu ji is saying to labor class uh, labor class okay we have bath and ena mulyana is there na nitin bhai has another guest he says the statue yeah. of his beloved uh the statue of his beloved mm -hmm. can you guess who was her beloved his beloved peter yasser is very close to the answer yes anybody uh, okay anay bhat is saying elizabeth barrett browning yeah it's very correct answer elizabeth barrett browning Yeah, we have uh, Browning up there in this Victorian era. You know, we have Robert Browning, and we have Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, they two were uh, friends initially, and this friendship turned into deep love. So Barrett Browning, uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, asked her parents to uh, to to marry him, but the parents were not uh, agreed. both few away and uh, did the uh, love marriage they went to italy and they settled in italy so we have very much influence of italy in his poetry uh, this is how this is the journey how they got get got married and uh, so this is again a personal detail and we will have to go through all these things Uh, exactly elizabeth barrett browning and he has dedicated on this thing to her we have alfred lord tennyson uh, this lord at the adjective the lord uh, one has to remember why this has, how he has got this lord adjective lord he was a poet laureate during uh, queen victoria and the awarded chancellor's gold medal from cambridge in 1829 wonderful work and i think it happens every year that a question or related question to ulysses or you can pick up this great poet any of the work by this great poet is asked into the next such examination the tennyson is that important uh, here we are going to talk about all poets in a nutshell but you will have to go through each and every word and how he has when he has written all these things and then after you listen is the lady of shallot in memoriam a h h now this is a uh, elegy a h h uh, dear listener i want to ask you a question a h h stand for A H H stands for. Yes, there is an answer, Arthur Henry Hallam. Okay, very great. Because why did I am asking the the same question? Because again, in another poet, uh, such type of uh, allegory and uh, such type of name will be repeated. So there was a question in that. A H H and A H M stands for the charge of light brigade. Motor di Arthur, brick, 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 crossing the bar. Uh, Idols of the king, the lotus sitter, Mariana, the princess. These are the great works by this great poet. In 1855, Browning brought men and women dedicated to Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is, and now find the connection between. this to this is this pair elizabeth barrett browning in 1855 men and women all in a uh, wonderful collection by barrett browning 1833 went to russia and then from they moved to italy life of strafford poetic and dramatic worlds by her that was sardelo in 1840 remember this work 
it's a very much beautiful description of Italian lifestyle and dramatic lyrics 1842 dramatic romances and lyrics 1845 so Browning Elizabeth Barrett Browning is more popular as a poet and for this one it's also dramatic persona 1864 the ring and the book Remember this one, 1869, The Ring and the Book. God is in the heaven. All is right with the world. Sipa passes. These lines were once asked in the examination. God is in the heaven. All is right with the world. There is a term, Victorian compromises. Victorian compromise. And uh, if you want to stand your this to, to stand this term Victorian compromise, this is wonderful example. God is in heaven, all is right with the world. It's a drama, but very important. That's why I have written over here. Bells and the pomegranates, threefold. Papa passes drama again. King Victor and King Charles. Uh, the return of the Russes. Poland's birthday, a soul's tragedy, a Luria, Luria in a balcony. Uh, Browning was a poet who would be a dramatist but couldn't be. This is a statement I think given by uh, Lucas. Uh, he was a poet. He would like to become a dramatist but he couldn't be. And here, and this is the reason why we have got dramatic monologue. In this era, wonderful lines. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Uh, relationship with Robert Browning. His works are, are each verse I'm not going to read because it will, it will take time then. Relationship with Robert Browning. The Cry of the Children, 1843. Yes, we do those. 1851 poem before Congress that is 1860 Aurora Lay a novel in words this is a wonderful example and it is to be there in our memory Aurora Lay 1856 remember this one this is very important because many times there are questions from this Serfim 1833 Sonnets from the Portuguese. Now there was a question, and uh, it was a contextual question in a way. Uh, why are this title, this anthology, is called only Portuguese sonnets? What is the meaning of Portuguese sonnets? So there are there, there is a huge paragraph to stand this one. Why this is Portuguese sonnet? How he she has an influence from Portuguese. With taking hands and bleeding feet, we dig deep. The process that you all are going undergoing, dear aspirants, this is the time and this is exactly dedicated to all of you. Matthew Arnold has dedicated to all of us with aching hands and bleeding feet. We dig deep. Lay stone on stone. We bear the burden and the heat of the long day and wish it were done. It were done, that means I hope on behalf of Matthew Arnold, I wish that uh, the mission, the goal that you all have secured to crack net and said examination may come as true mm -hmm. because these are aching hands and bleeding feet. A school inspector Arnold was this was again this was a question once asked. He was a school inspector for 35 years in rugby and uh, this is the experience from where he has got rugby chapel. A professor of poetry for 10 years in Oxford. And this long 10 years experience where he has delivered lectures on translating Homer in 1861. And we got 
uh, his wonderful work that is on translating Homer. Uh, Arian Solar Gipsy Tharsis A H C, and there was A H H Tharsis in 1861. Allergy, and uh, it stands for Arthur Hallam Clough. Uh, the Straight Reveller and Other Poems, that is 1849, anonymously, he published his work. He has written some essays, essays in criticism, 1865 to 1880. These two wonderful volumes made him very famous, with a range of Matthew Arnold. So he was not only poet, he was a very good critic, he was a saist. Culture and Anarchy in 1816. Nine, where he, he has talked the range of topics of Gerald, unborn tomorrow and dead yesterday. Why fret about them? If today be sweet, then what do you want to do? Why do you want to do it? Why do you want to do it? Why do you want to do it? Why do you Live your life, what is today? This was the idealism of Fitzgerald. Very minor in reading that this Victorian poets. We are sometimes in many history books we are not finding him. Arthur Huclau, 1880 to 1883, was a subject of elegy of Tennyson, Tharasis. Amos de Voyage. French title and this disciples that is again pessimistic behavior in this work. James Thompson, let us talk about James Thompson. Wonderful work by James Thompson that is City of Dreadful Night. Sunday at Hampstead and Sunday up the river. This school one should go through because there are certain questions once asked from Spasmodic School of Poetry in 1850s. Uh, it's not much top the school. Spasmodic School of Poetry, Philip James Bailey's Festus, Sidney Thompson's Doubles Butler, uh, W.E.A. Tom's Vermilion. These are three works which gave they, they gave a good stand to space modic school of poetry in 18, 1855 or this is 1850s school 1855 after the work of that is vermilion by w e items and Ayton who branded this school as space modic school uh, there is an mcq to be remembered the space modic school was founded and branded by Aton in his work for million. After Sesmodic, there is, we all are quite aware about this. Free Raphaelite Brotherhood. If you are not calling it Brotherhood, then there is Fleshly School of Poetry. Or it is also granted as Free Raphaelitism. A few characters, few, few writers, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, D.G. Rossetti, William Holman Hunt, John Everest, Miles, James Collinson, Frederick George Stephens, William Mitchell, Rossetti. There are five main poets to whom we must remember in this free of light. It began in 1848. Why it is pre Raphaelite? Not Raphaelite, not after Raphaelite. Why it is pre Raphaelite? This question should be there in all of us minds. Basically, this was very influenced by the poet paintings. And from the painting of Raphael, they were quite they were disagreed with these paintings and they thought that it should be natural, it should be simple, it should be sincere. 
so no complexity no ambiguity to be found in the art of in the piece of art and the rosetti especially and this is hunt remember william holman hunt who gave this term uh, blessed demozel lined out from the gold bar of the heaven dg rosetti one page that we have already talked that, that was husband and wife now here dg rosetti another page rosetti they here they are brother and sister this was also a question once asked what is relationship between two of these and those two of the rosetti that is brother and sister christina rosetti and dg rosetti they are husband and wife so don't mix it up are uh, the leading spirit of prv dg rosetti uh, who is the leader of uh, of let poetry if you are asked then definitely we have dg rosetti is the leader of free of let poetry my sister slip that is christina rosetti is dedicated this work to christina rosetti the house of life william morris a member of uh, prb free of let brotherhood life and death of jason figure and walson earthly paradise collection of 24 romantic narrative poems news from nowhere the veil well at the walls and the dream of john ball these are the works famous works by william morris ac swinburne again on charles swinburne novelist playwright poet and critic he was also associated with uh, pre raphlet brotherhood and the decadent movement he usually preferred to write on taboo topics he has he was i think in his time was very courageous to write on uh, lesbian and so on so forth topics atlanta is a tragedy in classical style and the hounds of spring both well Mary Stuart. These are the works by Mrs. Swinburne and the Victorian poets. Poetry, Petmore. We have Angel in the House, The Victories of Love, The Unknown Heroes, The Toys. Francis Thompson, in the Victorian poet, was quite addicted by opium, like Coleridge. sister song again very similar was digi rosetti and here the same a similar title not it cannot be the same but similar title sister's song here by francis thompson hound of the hound of heaven in no strange land george meredith must not be forgotten the reading of the earth reading of earth here they picked the darwins theory and applied his his theory scientific theory to literature in reading of earth another work that is modern love an odes in contribution to french history very late poet of uh, victorian era sometimes we are considering thomas hardy as the in the initial in the beginning of modern poetry but in the victorian era also we, we we can consider him as a late victorian thomas hardy the poet who connects victorian to modern and modern to victorian wessex like malgudi in india wessex and other verses in 1918 98 poems of the past and present 1901 the time of 
instance, these are dogs like how we have few we have Nine Jingo is um, is a talk to we sh we, you should go deeply inside because there are questions as the jingoism must that this is king food tall and he he he, he wrote these lines inspired from Shakespeare nothing will come out of nothing. See, you have some certain connection in modernism, absurd, no worth thing. I think will mount Godot. He has certain connection. Shakespeare was modern in his time. G.M. Hopkins was modern in his time. And today we are modern in our time. G.M. Hopkins, two very important things that he has given in step and sprung rhythm what is in very well functioning in a systematic mm -hmm. in a particular order well disciplined this is called in scape and something like as derrida has given the term rupture something that disturbs what is a, in, in a harmony in a chain that is what we call in our sprung rhythm. That which disturbs the system, there is a sprung rhythm in that is all everything is in harmony. In as well. Structure, genre, everything is in a system. There is something not of this is not fitting this this uh, the window the tea terrible or terrible sonnets are also called dark sonnets eighteen eighty five or eighteen six Oscar Wilde wonderful term art for us sake decadent movement decadent 191890s ballad of reading all these are three contribution of oscar wilde in a way in essence he has given more oxford movement that we must not forget it oxford movement though it was religious revival in church In 18 or associated with this, there were. Uh, uh, yeah, Tarmish, uh, again, there is uh, the, the voice is cracking. Yeah. Okay, okay, let me do one thing. Yeah, yeah. Am I audible now? Uh, yes, and you have. Am I audible? Uh, yes, yes, you are audible, and you have five minutes. Uh, Okay, because okay, there are okay, so okay. many no questions worry, no following worry. in the chat box. <laughs> uh, uh, I haven't just read any of the questions. It is yes. going to be finished. Yes, yes. All so right. So before we go, okay, okay. Before we go, we go to chat box. Here are sample of uh, ten questions. Within three minutes, I would ask to the listeners to go through it to write the answer on their own and then I will display an answer key. The topic and the statement that uh, part Joshi, dear part Joshi, you, you have yeah. stated the first question, in the beginning of uh, the lecture. Yeah, the first question no, is... No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I don't want any answer from your side. No, you no, just I'm just, I'm just reading out the question. questions for the participants. Okay. Can they read it? Uh, I don't know if they can read it. Uh, fine. Yeah. If we can have answers in the chat box. So question number followed no, 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 by no. the option what, number. This, this is an activity. 
an activity is like that uh, first i want to instruct to them that this thing for this 20 10 questions they are given 3 minutes and okay. within this 3 minutes they will have to write the appropriate answer into their own book or mobile or right. whatever right. right. they will have to answer in their as per their uh, conveniently right right but within this 3 3 minutes yeah. and after yeah. this 3 minutes i am sharing uh, an answer key and from the answer key they have it, they have any ambiguity mm. we will discuss right so okay. this is what you have studied in the beginning of lecture this is this activity will definitely stand right okay true true so suppose dear students this is your net examination think that you are all are sitting on the benches and your time starts right now 41 3 minutes you are given for this 10 marks question yes dear friends after 3 minutes we are i, I am displaying an answer key from the from you Okay, the participants are saying done, sir. I think yes. Okay, great, great, great. Now I'm sharing this answer key. You can match your answers with it, and if you have, if you find any ambiguity to the following answer key, you may claim keeping authentic proof. You may discuss it too right now. If you have any query regarding your answer given.
Come on, if you find any query regarding this. Any ambiguity? Any problem? Yeah, any because, doubts? Any yes. questions with uh, the participants uh, as regards yeah, to. Any questions? This, uh, particularly this answer. Uh, NMC. Yes, anybody? Okay. Uh, Abuji is saying uh, one in question number one, the answer should be C, and in question number two, the answer should be B. One C. That is hmm. method. I don't think so. One is proper. And the other? In question number two, it should be B. 1886. 1886. Mm -hmm. That's what then, he thinks. Yeah, as such, uh, no other. No uh, other? No other claims. Yeah. Okay, no other claims. These two claims that you rose. No, no, I don't think there is any problem. They claimed questions. Yeah, because 1837 but, uh, is the year of anointment. Yeah. And so Golden Jubilee is 1887. Yes, yes. So there isn't an issue, I think. Hmm. Issue that is deliberately kept by me in question number nine, who is the author of Aurora Lay. Hmm. But you couldn't find it out. <laughs> now here that is C. Yes. C here. It is hmm. C in answer key that is given. Sorry. Oh my God. Huh. This. Mm. Nine. That is C. And how, let us read our ninth question. Who is the author of Aurora Lay? And C that talks about uh, Maurice. Is it Maurice? No. Then who is the correct answer? Yes. Participants, please. Did it catch anybody's attention from the participant side? Yeah, Elizabeth Barrett Browning yeah. says. So this is A, that is correct answer, but in my answer key, that is the answer key that is displayed by the authority that says that C is the correct answer. But as you have learned, you have studied, and you have been guided, that is Krishna Rosetti that has written Aurora Le. The answer says something else. Now here, the ambiguity lies. Now for such type of ambiguity, what will you do? Number one, you will have to follow each and every terms and conditions given by the authority. For example, condition is that file your queries, file your ambiguity, sending with appropriate authentic proof and uh, 2500 or 5000 or any type of fees that is stated by the authority now this is one thing but after this condition even the answer key is not changed and according to the answer key Aurora Le, uh, William Morris has written Aurora Le, and this is the final this is the thing what has happened in 2016 uh, this is my own experience that uh, I was 230. I was cut off stayed of open category, general category as 230. Uh, sorry, 232. And I was standing at 230. So I had required only one question to be edited properly. But unluckily, after several attempts, uh, it couldn't uh, be edited and finally I had to go to higher uh, high court because I had done each and everything that the, the, the things that were demanded by uh, MS University by our honorable coordinator sir of SLED, VC sir of uh, uh, Broda University but even though they did not change anything, finally I took help of uh, Honorable High Court 
and uh, within two three months only i was corrected not only one but there were three questions which were edited and i was given six marks so i remember this was the correct time it was evening time and i received the call uh, that there are six more students who are getting benefits of this correction and they were uh, they, they asked me to give the benefits to only me or to others also and the, the decision that was in favor of all and there were six more students experience who could clear flat examination so dear friends there are mistakes deliberately or naturally that i don't know but the, every year there are mistakes it depends upon all of us whether and what are the steps that we all have been taking to solve it not only set flat, flat examination in net examination too in gpsc examinations too there are mistakes in answer key god knows what is the reason but it happens and for uh or and it is a question of our future our career we must go each and every question with authentic proof and we must have certain courage to claim it justice is yours we all are reading great essays poems novels each and everything tending our justice point but when it comes to the real action apne gujarati ma kon to master ni jaat bo apne thoda daramna bihamna eva evi apni this is our personality that we cannot take such thing courageous step but apne leva jo we must do it and do it dear friends if you are correct if you have authentic proof definitely they will correct it and the decision will come to your side but it's it, it it's a long journey that i had to go on and undergone so yes let us come back to your question answer dear part sir yes uh thank you uh, uh, uh dharmesh bhai for sharing your experience ultimately the truth prevailed and it should prevail and if uh, the candidates have worked hard and uh, it's an error on the side of uh the host institute uh, definitely mm. we should we should uh, fight the required fight um all right uh, we have six to seven questions waiting for you yes, 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 yes. let's definitely. begin with a question by dr chirag adatya who says uh, why did aton uh, use the term spasmodic for these poets uh, i think he is referring to marston alexander smith and others why why the term spasmodic Uh, the space modic term why he has referred uh, there were the three or four more writers and uh, the uh, uh, this person who was third poet space modic uh, i think he has taken some reference geographical reference and uh, classical reference too in his work i had read it uh, in uh, uh, js mundra's history of english literature the proper answer lies there okay yes. so there you have the uh, reference source mentioned dr chira garatya uh, yes mundra history yes. of english literature yes uh, nitin pithadia uh, has yes, pithadia, hmm. how does victor uh, victorian poetry differ from romantic and modern poetry okay how does it differ from romantic and modern uh two question in one uh, how differ romantics has no characteristic the answer lies here in the beginning itself of our sessions because the poetry of victorian era they you know mixed up because of social and political economic religious these are the factors which has influenced to uh, to think this poets into different thing a uh, different way yeah, the people who were praising wordsworth there was praising naturalism natural aspects environment atmosphere coleridge came 
that nature is not that much only pleasant it has the other side also and uh, industrialism came social reformation came science has developed unrest in society that came these are the various things which are differing victorian poetry from uh, this uh, romantic poetry and your uh, another question that is how does it differ from modern victorian how, what, what is the difference between victorian and modern uh, modern into modern you know jab there it has wonderfully said that there is not the meaning into the modern poetry there are meanings there are interpretations and there the generation the whole race is influenced by everything happening near the same thing which is there into the victorian era the fruits which are being taken into the modern era were rooted into the victorian age the, the seeds were planted of social unrest science development uh, from uh, we have hard is pessimistic behavior and that gradually turns into uh, uh, you can say here in uh, godos play also so the man was being uh, was living into the essential life he, he, the families were and moving being remain into the modern era so due to all these aspects industrial scientific social and raised uh, the seeds of modernism were planted here in the victorian era so uh, in a way if you were, if you will go to so each and every characteristic that all three are very different mm -hmm. yes i hope you have understood it all right um how was gm hopkins reinvestigated by yeah. ts eliot gm yes reinvestigated ts eliot uh ts eliot was fond of uh, experimentation experiments thinking the other way hopkins too in his time was as we talked that he was too modern in his time he has two different terms given and uh, eliot also eliot has taken the stand of classics he has got two uh, these are uh, they have quite similarity yes uh another question from chiragadatiya that reads how can we distinguish early victorian poets from the late victorian poets uh, can yes, we yes, say that late, later victorians did not compromise as much as the early victorians did late victorian did not compromise as the early victorians did the comp is it the question that i have got the distinction between these two early and late right yes so early victorian poets who were quite influenced by romantic revival romanticism so if we will read their poetry we will find certain metaphors motifs themes by hook or crook they are romantic in mood not the other way we have influence of romantic era in the early victorian poets and we have an example of work of two great poets late victorian poets i think jira aditya sir has asked that uh, who out of these two were more in social unrest definitely late victorian poets were in more social unrest and in the late victorian poets we will find certain symptoms certain characteristics that were turned into uh, modern poetry modernism okay. yes uh nitin bhai has asked further clarification on two terms number one kirtle sonnet so what is a kirtle sonnet and number two 
uh, what is the term Victorian compromise? Term Victorian compromise. Now the Victorians have started compromises with uh, the the things uh, that were found into this, uh, this romantic period, a belief system, you can say, because uh, this was social unrest that has happened after when the people had coming out from the center. Especially this was a great ray of Queen Victoria where the voyages took place. And especially this was the time it was said that never the sun was setting during the reign of Queen Victoria. It is said, it is stated. And this happened when the people were coming out of the tradition from the system. The unrest will definitely took, take place. A protestant came from the Catholic. There is religious unrest. Scientific development took place. The culture in, in, in culture, in traditions, there will be unrest. Macaulay came to India and uh, expanded his educational academic views. And we, today, the language that we all are speaking, the roots are so deep to the Victorian era. So these are social unrest took place and what was another question uh, he wanted to uh, clarify what is Kirtle sonnet okay this was uh, Hopkins that he has given this term Kirtle sonnet uh, there are a third uh, three fourths I can say the structure that is a Petrarchan sonnet he has played he has made certain experiments with uh, the format of sonnets in Kirtle sonnet he has given three-fourths of the structure of uh, uh, Petrarchan sonnet that is assisted as and a quatrain that he has made certain experiments in it and he has used his terminology that is sprung rhythm in it yes this is how Kirtle sonnet is different uh all right. Uh, the the last question for the day, I believe, comes yeah, from yeah. Uh, again Dr. Chira Garatia. He G asks: G Victorian period is known for industrial revolution, and so many new inventions uh, were done during this period. So, how did all these things affect the poets of the Victorian period? Uh, can you please repeat because your voice uh, was not okay. Up. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says a Victorian period is known for industrial revolution and yeah. mm -hmm. um, so many new inventions took place during the Victorian period. Mm -hmm. So he's asking how all these things affected the poetry of the Victorian period. You have already partially answered uh, this question, but yes. yeah, if you want to add something. Question. Yes, yes, wonderful question. Uh, we have uh, learned a definition of poetry that. Uh, Poetry is a reflection of society. Poetry is a reflection of society, then definitely what we live, how we live, what we feel, what we think, what we talk is definitely reflected into literature. The same way, industrial revolution that took place. Now, industrial revolution is a huge thing. Uh, a huge thing. It cannot occur in a night so long journey has passed science has developed industrial revolution tinton abbey we have wordsworth has mentioned in his wonderful poem how and what changes are occurred into nature are mentioned in poetry now if these things are happening Poetry will be definitely affected. It cannot be a parcel. Hmm? Uh, today, from the villages, let us talk about India itself. We will, uh, Aditya sir, we will understand this better if we will talk about ourselves even. So, we all are coming from the rural life, most of us. 
not to do job into industry but for the better life for to, to educate ourselves we are coming from the rural area so certain uh, traditions that we have been keeping aside culture motifs all these things that are l e a v i n g living we are leaving it and acquiring certain new life certain new tradition certain new system this will definitely affect uh, our literature too so industrial revolution when it took place the, the people who, who gathered there in factory to we have black who has noticed the chimney sweeper we have here many writers who have reflected upon victorian and industrial agricultural revolution too so literature cannot be a partial thing that cannot be affected by the things that are happening in the society and these two two things two revolution that occurred into this era greatly reflected and greatly influenced the literature and so uh all right then we have uh, answers on aurora lee was published by elizabeth barrett browning uh, 1856 curtel sonnet 10 and a half lines all right all right uh, i think that brings us mm. to the close of the session uh, thank you uh, thank you dharmesh sir mm. thank you for making yourselves available uh, uh, sir had quite a busy schedule today uh, he is already uh, attending a training thank program you. traveling uh, from to and fro from junagadh and uh, in the midst of this uh, heavy <laughs> schedule hectic schedule he has availed himself for all our aspirants uh, on behalf of the alumni association i take this opportunity to thank you dharmesh sir uh, and uh, also uh, we request the resource persons uh, to mail the ppt at the end of the session if they don't have a problem sharing it with our aspirants so uh, no, no, no. yes no so problem i said uh, if you could mail it to uh, the alumni uh, email id uh, we will share it with our aspirants uh, once again thank you so much and thank you all the participants uh, for a patient listening thank you so much thank you